Anyway, you guys catch what I'm saying. Hallelujah. Amen. But, you know, I've had the privilege of walking with this beautiful, beautiful family uh, for, you know, Teresa and myself and, and the rest of the family, Michael, Misha, Braden, and Giselle, and Emmett. And we have been walking with this beautiful family for many years, and uh, we've watched. We've had the privilege of watching their, their children grow, and it all started, you know, I don't know, back in um, the Haleiwa campus, but man, you know, just watching all these things and, and watching how they're being rooted in Christ. And so I wanted to ask Isaac Monteri, come on up here. <laughs> Round of applause, yeah. And um, man, you know, the Lord has been speaking a lot to him. And I'm, I'm so excited for him because I can just feel it. I can just sense that he's just beginning. And it's like, you know, just having the privilege of watching him grow up. I remember seeing Isaac when he was like this, maybe like this. I don't know. And he had a baby face and all this kind of stuff. And yeah. <laughs> and so I'm like, wow, such a blessing. And it was so many years ago. And to see him now, such a handsome young man, right? <laughs> but anyway, go ahead and share. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much, Pastor Glenn. And hi, my name is Isaac Monteri. If we haven't already met. And I just wanted to first off by saying thank you to God for this amazing opportunity and obviously to Pastor Glenn for allowing me to speak today a little bit about what it means to be rooted and how it's looked like in my life. And before I start, I just wanted to say I think my two parents, I mean, she's already crying, but um, I think they were definitely way more nervous than I was before I even stepped up here on stage. And I just wanted to say a big thank you to them and obviously to my brother, Zachary Monteri. Um, for just being role models in my life. And so with that, I just wanted to say um, a simple definition of being rooted is to establish deeply and firmly. Most of us think of maybe a plant or maybe a tree of being rooted, but we must first plant the seed for it to grow. It's not going to grow in my hand. It's not going to grow on a table. It's not going to grow in my pocket, but it will only grow when we dig it into the ground. So that's kind of where my story starts about 12 years ago when I started to attend New Hope Holy Evil with my family, as new believers, we were pretty oblivious to the greatness of God and to the plan that he had for us. And even after getting baptized in the third grade, I uh, still, I mean, I knew what it meant to be saved, but I didn't really have a relationship with God. And I call this season of my life foundation because my parents... Um, thankfully planted the seed for me and my brother that hopefully one day that we would have a relationship with him as well. And in Luke 6, it mentions that, or in many other occasions, that we should build our house on a firm foundation. And in the same way, if we build our lives on Christ, no storm and no attack from the enemy will get to us. And this time period was also critical in the way that my parents, um, by example, uh, yeah, by leading by example, I saw the spiritual transformation over the years in Holly Eva. You know, they broke bad habits. They got involved with the church. And, of course, they started to become better parents than they were before. <laughs> and as I go into the next section of, um, in the next season, I have a disclaimer in that just because you're rooted in Christ doesn't necessarily mean you're immune to the attacks of the enemy. <clears throat> it, makes, it just makes it easier for you to turn to him in your time of need. And as I went into this next season of my life in middle school, I got this all wrong. I was too comfortable, and I let my guard down. And one of the biggest storms that I had to deal with in my life was being envious of my family. I looked, to them, I looked up to them so much that um, I was envious of their spiritual gifts and their spiritual talents. And with just seeing how prevalent it was and how much recognition they got from the church, I felt that I needed to live up to the same... Um, I thought there was an expectation, basically, to live up to. But, um, I mean, I, you guys probably know that my mom and my brother are on the worship team, and my dad is one of the leaders in the church, and it just felt that I needed to be something great as well, and I wasn't at the time. So it is apparent that I wasn't embedded enough during this season, but after a lot of time of reflection, I realized that, you know, I'm a unique person. I'm loved by God. And I only understood that until I fully surrendered myself to God and I started to pray and spend more time with Him. 
And the, although there wasn't any specific event that changed my life forever, um, it was because they laid the, the foundation for me that I wouldn't fall away. And I guess the last question about holy expectations, there are numerous things that I've learned from being rooted in Christ and growing up in the church. But one of the first things is a spiritual transformation will take place with the end result of intimacy with God. And in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, it says, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. So God is directly telling us that we need to have a sincere, loving relationship with him. But what does an intimate relationship look like with our Heavenly Father? Well, we can show it in a multitude of ways, but in my life, I think it's been spending alone time with him, communicating with him through prayer, and using the word as his voice. And as you can see, these are all nutrients that we need for our roots to grow deeper in him. So I guess the best way to describe it is that no matter what path God puts you on, it'll always lead back to him. And as our relationships grow with God, so will our relationships with others grow. And in my life, I've seen that in the past three months or so, I've, um, sorry, I've grown way deeper with my family than I have in the past 17 years of my life. And, sorry, uh, but yeah, um, I've just gone so much deeper with them and my relationships with them have definitely healed over time. And lastly, um, one of the other expectations we can expect ourselves um, from being rooted in Christ is being intentional with God. Being intentional with God gives us a sense of purpose and allows us to confidently walk with him according to his will. <clears throat> and as time goes on, I can clearly see the character characteristics in me, my family, and in the church. I'm confident that his kingdom is, is fine. And in and in closing, I just wanted to say that no matter how short, long, challenging, or rewarding a season is, if you are rooted in Christ, no storm will shake you, and God will surely reward those who do not fall away. And with that, I'll leave you guys with a scripture from Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 4 through 6. It reads, Farmers who wait for perfect weather never plant. If they watch every cloud, they never harvest. Just as you cannot understand the path of the wind or the mystery of a tiny baby growing in its mother's womb, so you cannot understand the activity of God who does all things. Plant your seed in the morning and keep busy all afternoon, for you don't know if profit will come from one activity or another, or maybe both. So basically it's saying that the best time to plant the seed was 10 years ago, but the second best time to plant the seed is now. So with that, I pray that you would meditate on the scripture, and I hope that this was helpful to understanding what it truly means to be rooted in Christ. Thank you guys once again for listening, and God bless. What can we say after that? I'm looking at Lonnie, and I'm looking at Pastor Earl over there, and we're just like, <laughs>